Hi and welcome back to the dead ball area. The Lions have been great value for money in this year's Super 15, playing what I feel has been some of the most entertaining rugby of the year, utilising an exciting but relatively unknown backline backed up by a fast dynamic ball playing pack. The Lions have shown that if your intentions are positive, there is still the space to play exciting running rugby. In their recent game against the Waratahs, right wing Ruin Convict scored a wonderful try from a strike move launched deep within their own half, and we're going to look at it in a little bit more detail here. The thing I really like about this try is how the Lions clearly set out the pattern of play to exploit the yellow card given to Rob Horn five minutes earlier for a tip tackle. The Lions know that Horn is a key midfield defender of primary phase, so the first thing we need to look at is the Waratah's defensive setup. Now Nathan Gray is an astute defensive coach and clearly believes in getting the best defenders where they'll have the most impact. On lineouts, we'll often see Foley defending at two with Hooper slotting in at ten. Bill often drops to the left wing with Horn slotting in at 12 and it's a similar story at scrum time where we'll often see Horn come into the midfield, defend at 10 or 12 or create the extra defender. So with Horn off the pitch, the defensive solidity is not quite there and we see Phipps retreat from the scrum to try and balance this out. If we change the angle, we can see that the big issue is that the Waratahs are all defending inside shoulder. And while it's not unusual to run a drift defence this deep in the opposition's half, we can see that when we move on a few frames, because Foley was on the inside shoulder, he is easily helpful for us as dummy run. That coupled with the fact Cooper has already drifted out onto the Mapoe means the gap is wide open and Combink is able to slide on the outside arc, collect the screen pass from Yanti and make a clean break. With Phipps in at 10 there is no sweeper and this allows Combink to make a lot of yards before he shut down. Now, personally I think a better option would have been for Phipps to just forego the scrum, drop to 10 straight away and get the defence set early. Straight away though we can see that Horn's yellow card is having a profound effect on the Waratah's defence and the Lions knowing how key he is are looking to exploit his time off the pitch. Once the line is breached it's all about the Lions keeping momentum high and the Waratah's defence constantly in transition. Falau makes the cover tackle but we can see straight away the Lions are there in numbers and focus on clearing out the breakdown. The Waratahs don't even consider the ruck and scramble to set a solid defensive line which is great for the Lions as in the end of three seconds the Lions have cleared the ruck are up and attacking the gain line. A dummy run from Mostert and then the dummies and darts over the gain line with some ease. The next ruck is a similar story, with a quick clear early on and the Tars defence is unable to get off the line and the lines have gone 70 metres in two phases. The line is up and due to the speed of the attack the Waratah has been unable to get around the corner and the defence is clustered around the ruck or loaded on the right, leaving Cooper, Naya Rovo and Hooper defending the short side against five lions. The Lions exploit this with another quick ruck and Convink is back in the line to scoot over and finish the score. It's actually a pretty simple but well worked strike move by the Lions and once the line is broken the Tars are always scrambling to get back, unable to get off the line and utilise their aggressive line speed to shut down the move. Now if we return to the beginning of the sequence I want to look at something that happens in the scrum that flags up to me how intelligent the sequence of play this is. The Lions are a good scrummaging side and they know that they need to keep the Tars 18 for as long as possible to give their own Lucy's an advantage. Timing of the line scrum is top notch and we can hear them working in unison as they get a clean strike and take the space. They also get the slightest of wheels on turning the Tars back row towards the touchline. Things stabilise but as soon as the heads of the Tars back row come up the lines immediately hit their second shove taking the Tars scrum backwards another step at which point it folds in. That little shove at that point of clearing means the Tars back row have to stay down that fraction longer and allows the lines pack to get on the front foot whilst the Tars chase the ruck backwards. It really is a superb and clinical try and clearly shows the larger impact that small margins can have on a game. No yellow card means a full defensive line and the second shove has less impact as there are defenders already in the line plus a sweeper to clean up. That's not to say this try is Horn's fault. Yellow cards happen and teams have to be able to adjust but I think we can see how much impact something as simple as an uncontrolled tackle has on the overall team and leading into the playoffs how control and discipline is paramount to a team like the Waratahs defence of the title. Thank you for watching and don't forget to follow us on Facebook and Twitter.